Welcome to The Shift Show with Adriana Bucci. Join me every week to learn all about narcissistic abuse recovery, healing from physical and emotional pain after the abuse, and everything else to do with toxic people and how they affect your physical, emotional, and mental health. And no, you are not the crazy one. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Let's get right to it. Hello and welcome to episode number 29 of The Shift Show. This episode is such an intense interview. Um, I interviewed with Vera Wilhelmsen. She is absolutely incredible. Her story is absolutely mind-blowing, honestly. Like she suffered from chronic fatigue syndrome and was bedridden and literally did not think she was going to survive. She went from that to like being in a wheelchair to figuring out on her own how to heal. So a quick bio of Vera, and this is in her words, she is a Norwegian girl woman with an incredible story. In her 20s, she became bedbound for three years with chronic fatigue syndrome and was too sick to even sit in a wheelchair or leave the house. After giving up on the healthcare system, she fought her way out of it completely on her own, and today she's fully recovered. She works, exercises, and shakes her butt at every opportunity. After her physical recovery, she quickly realized that the cause of her illness and suffering was narcissistic abuse. Her healing journey from that childhood abuse and medical neglect is still ongoing, but she's now sharing her story and her joy on YouTube. In one year, she has gone from, in her words, a gray, people-pleasing, moldable blob into a color explosion. And you should totally follow her on Instagram. She's She literally is a colorful explosion. She's amazing. Her energy is awesome. And I think you are going to love this interview. So... I will stop rambling and let's get right into the interview. I hope you enjoy it and I hope that this really helps anybody who is suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome to get inspired um, that, you know, healing is totally possible for you as well. So let's get right to it. Hi, Vera. Thanks so much for coming on my podcast today. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, I think we have a lot of a lot in common and a lot to talk about. So totally, yeah. <laughs> totally. I'm so excited to have you here and talk about your healing journey and your experiences. But before we get started, why don't you? Why don't we start with um, just give us a little rundown of like who you are, what you do, and um, just so the audience can get a little bit acquainted with you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Vera and I'm 28. I'm from Norway and um, I have a YouTube channel where I share how I recovered from severe chronic fatigue syndrome. I was bedbound for three years and I was sick for, I don't know, six years before that, but I was functioning wow. and <laughs> I was on the path to become an engineer in chemistry and uh, I was uh, extremely pressured to become an engineer uh, by my parents Aww. so and there was a lot of like brainwashing and fear around it mm -hmm. and um, when I got when I began recovering I realized that life is short and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I am going to do what I want now. I realized that there was no point in getting better if I wasn't going to do what I wanted to do and I wasn't going to live a, an authentic life. So now I am studying to become an Ayurvedic practitioner. Cool. Uh, Ayurveda is the um, traditional health system of India and it was what I used to uh, recover in addition to, of course, uh, like truly dealing with uh, toxic relationships and mm -hmm. abuse and like journaling, meditation, etc. Mm -hmm. So, Amazing. yeah. <laughs> wow. So tell me about the chronic fatigue. Like when, how did that all start? Like what, uh, how did that look like? It started when I was uh 
20, I had began to have like really bad digestion, couldn't digest anything, was in a lot of pain. Uh, it started uh, a few months before I started university, so correlation. Of course, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my Stress. god, the correlation's always there when we really think uh, about it. <laughs> it's so obvious in hindsight, but yeah. yeah. You you can only like deal with what you got at the time. Right. So um yeah, I had like trouble sitting in um the classes. It was painful to like sit down. So I would like leave the class and just stand in the bathroom and <laughs> waiting oh. for the pain to pass. And so that went on for like three years until I finally collapsed. Oh no. So yeah <laughs> I just one day I just couldn't lift my head off the pillow anymore and that was like the um, September October of 2015 was like I would say uh I began being like bed bound it was a little on and off in the beginning and then it became like full on from 2016 wow so. <laughs> So like you literally could not get out of yeah. bed. You literally couldn't get out of your bed. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. No, it was like this gravity was a thousand times stronger or. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I just felt so hot and dizzy and I couldn't think, couldn't focus. Like the uh, months before my collapse, I, I remember I was sitting in a library trying to study and I would just read the same sentence over and over and over again and wow. it just wouldn't stick. I couldn't process it. So, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. And I'm assuming you spoke to a doctor at that point and like, what did they tell you? Yeah, I uh, definitely tried to get help but my doctor she didn't even seem like worried she was like ah, nah. are <laughs> we'll you just serious take some... <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> looking crazy. back at it now my <laughs> I should have switched doctors like after my first appointment Aww. but you, you, I, I grew up in narcissistic abuse and uh, from my experience it seemed like it seemed like every adult or authority figure in the world was like this and it was mm -hmm. just me that was sensitive couldn't handle it couldn't oh. communicate with them and so I was like trying to get this doctor to see me and believe me for like years wow. before I <laughs> gave up yeah that's awful that is awful <laughs> yeah. so did you end up like quitting school like what how did this chronic fatigue impact you? I, um, I uh, rested um, because I was forced to for a right. few months. But after Christmas um, 2016, like January 2016, I went back to university because I did feel a little better okay. because I had rested, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just tried to push on because yeah. I thought it was like life or death to finish school yeah. at the right time and not fall behind and yada mm. yada yada and I was running on I could I seriously couldn't lift my head if I hadn't if I didn't have any caffeine and sugar in my system wow. it was the only thing that could get me to function so <laughs> I was pushing myself so hard to, to just, wow. yeah, I put, I thought university was more important than my health and my life yep. basically, yep. because that was what I've been told. Yeah, That's what you believed. So <laughs> then my body ramped up the symptoms even harder, oh, no. of course. <laughs> so in, Tell me about in that. May, <laughs> so in May, a few months later, mm -hmm. I uh, lost the ability to walk. I kid wow. you not. I 
I couldn't feel my legs anymore. Oh, um, and I, it was worse on one side. So I was like limping and oh, I couldn't straighten my knees. I would just shake if I tried and I would have all these weird sensations in my feet, like extreme tingling, but also pressure and also lightness and heaviness at the same time it, it wow. was just like a nervous system mess basically wow so that's insane. and so then i was like <laughs> well i can take my exams in a wheelchair <laughs> oh no so, so i was like hmm, how do i get a wheelchair while well, i was trying to <laughs> but then and i'm actually quite thankful for my body doing this for me because it was the only way i would actually stop and listen mm -hmm. it happened in my arms as well oh. i lost function in my arms i couldn't unclench my fists i was always walking around oh. with fists and i had like all the pressure lightness heaviness uh, all the sensations and i just tried to do things using my thumbs and it was it was insane and then I finally like okay I need I need a break <laughs> wow then I like okay I'm taking the fall semester off mm -hmm. did your doctor start <laughs> taking you seriously I... <laughs> no oh no <laughs> like I was 23 years old <laughs> oh I God. couldn't walk and she told me that there was no point in sending me to a neurologist what? because uh, she didn't use these exact words, but this was kind of the the message because they have more important patients <gasps> to see. Like, I, 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 I kid you not. I'm not, I'm not That's exaggerating. Horrible. Like, I believe you. Wow. That's I had insanity. to like <laughs> fight yeah. to see a neurologist. That's and crazy. she f <laughs> she finally agreed to oh. um you can go to a private one they they have more time and <gasps> so i did <laughs> oh my god uh i'm so yeah. sorry you went through that that is horrible like <laughs> you know that's so <laughs> not you. normal for a 23 year old to go through that and then the doctor to just completely dismiss you like that and I thought the healthcare in Europe was like better <laughs> but what? Oh, yeah cool. and Norway is like famous for uh, having the best one <laughs> in the yeah. world <laughs> holy crap yeah <laughs> but it, it's definitely not my experience wow that's but yeah that is wild <laughs> wow so then what did you end up doing um uh one day my doctor was uh was absent for some reason and i randomly got to see uh, another gp okay and she was like oh my god we have a 23 year old here that suddenly can't walk and she like called the hospital oh, and uh can you see her tomorrow or today like <laughs> and wow. then i got got into the neurology department at the hospital at least awesome. but uh <laughs> I wouldn't say it helped. Right. <laughs> but right. they what did, did they do? all the uh, MRIs. Uh, I even did like, um, they give you electric shocks to see if the nerves can carry the signals. Oh, wow. And it, it was a really painful test, but yeah. the nerves did carry. They were like checking for um, diseases for the uh nerve um like nerve damage what's it yeah nerve damage yeah yeah and that was all fine and i even did like a spinal fluid oh test God. and it, it didn't close up again like they drained it from my lower back and it didn't close back up so every time i like tried to stand side? up I, yeah oh my god there, there was like spinal fluid was <gasps> leaking <laughs> And so no. when I tried to stand up, I would feel so much pain in my head. Oh and my I had God. to like <laughs> go back in and get blood from my arm injected into my lower back. And oh, it was just so much stress and pain. Wow. And now 
when I look back at it, it feels so unnecessary and what a but yeah, they, they <laughs> yeah. and this went on for months like oh, no. these tests weren't in like three days it was like okay we'll do that test next mm -hmm. month and i was always waiting 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 for months and months and months oh. so i spent like two years going through oh. all the hospital departments and uh, they did they were like no i can't find anything <laughs> and i was like swaying in my seat and sweating and i did not look well at all and uh, one neurologist said well uh you can run a marathon tomorrow for all i care <laughs> what <laughs> so his logic was since i can't find anything on my tests there's nothing wrong but oh my god like do you really think that they can measure every single reaction in mm -hmm. the body like there must be billions of uh, things happening in the body and right. they measured like eight i don't know oh <laughs> and they're gosh. like well there's nothing wrong oh my gosh <laughs> so yeah. yeah there's nothing wrong when a 23 like, year old can't move like that's yeah. not an issue <laughs> like wow <laughs> yeah that's so dismissive you needed some uh, humility like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that what a nightmare i'm so sorry you went through all that that i could not imagine thank you oh my god it was just like uh two years of psychological torture yeah. <laughs> and waiting and not knowing and uh, at that time i believed that uh, there was nerve damage definitely mm -hmm. And that I needed some treatment and I wasn't getting it. Like mm -hmm. I need help to heal the tissues here, but mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing's happening. So, uh -huh. and then I went to endocrinology, um, infection department, uh, like everything. A and then they were going to send me to this, um, department for like complex uh, disorder like a psychosomatic department okay um which which i actually think would have been uh, right it would mm -hmm. it, looking back yeah now i know that that was what i needed but uh that's kind of when the narcissistic abuse uh sabotaged so i i would like to point out that there was a department at the hospital that had i actually went there it might have been really good but i could tell that my mom was getting really agitated mm. at the thought of me seeing a therapist a psychologist mm. and them beginning to ask questions me beginning to talk right. and and i i just i actually i cancelled that appointment mm -hmm. it was free will but kind of not if right. you know what i mean yeah totally <laughs> yeah I, it was awful. survival and keeping the peace right i i just sensed this danger wow yeah that's terrible so that's <laughs> that's when i was um i became like out of the, i wasn't in the system anymore mm -hmm. And it was kind of my uh, fault, but yeah, no one was checking up on me and I didn't have any new appointments or mm -hmm. any, any, anywhere else to go really. Yeah. So then I just became isolated oh. in bed <laughs> at my wow. parents' house and I, uh, I didn't know what to do and I was, I was just deteriorating. I was losing so much weight mm. and uh, my heart uh, rhythms um, began to falter and oh <laughs> yeah, like I had like these heart palpitations and because I was so skinny, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I couldn't eat anymore. I couldn't digest anything mm. and yeah looking wow. back at it i know it it was because of the stress from the abuse and from right. the illness or the that was causing 
the loss of appetite and the pain mm -hmm. of digesting. So uh, <laughs> it was definitely the wrong environment to try to heal in living sure. at my parents' house. For sure. So it, <laughs> yeah, I was just like wasting away there and yeah. made everything so much worse. Oh man. How long were you yeah. there for? <laughs> uh like december 2017 until april 2019 oh my god yeah wow yeah. wow that's yeah wow and like the lowest point was december 2018 mm -hmm. then I, I was so skinny that i was i i, I was here i was preparing to die like oh I'm not God. exaggerating I was sorting through my things of course yeah for after I had passed <laughs> and but then when I reached this like rock bottom mm -hmm. I finally began to kind of wake up you could say mm -hmm. I, I just realized that I was going to die and and my parents would collect all these sympathies at my funeral. Yeah. And no, and no one would ever know what happened. How how they had treated me. Yeah. And why I, I had gotten so sick. Like, I would just add to their. Uh, I would just give them the biggest supply ever. Right. You know, they right. would get so much. Um, empathy, sympathy, for sure. uh, attention for have, yeah, me dying. And I, this image in my mind made me so angry. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> yeah, I it just torched, torched down all illusions and just carried me out of there. That's, it really did. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So is that when you kind of started learning about mind-body stuff and Ayurveda and all that? Uh, I actually discovered Ayurveda the spring before that. Okay. So I had been reading about it for months already, mm -hmm. and I knew that like I have to try this, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, I thought I had to go to India to get treatment, mm -hmm. and there was no way I could do that when I right. couldn't go to the grocery store. You know. Right. <laughs> So <laughs> I was just reading and trying to implement things myself. Mm -hmm. But the mainstream Ayurveda books are like for general health and prevention. Mm -hmm. And I needed like strong <laughs> treatment. So. Mm -hmm. But in December, um, I, ha I found an Ayurvedic practitioner in my city. Amazing. In, Nor in Norway. Wow. Like, what the hell? <laughs> that, is, that is so lucky. Wow. Yes. Amazing. I, I you wouldn't think there it. would be that in, in Norway. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so It was cool. like destiny or something. Yeah. yeah. I do feel, I do believe it was destiny, totally. actually. The universe had your because, back for sure. Because she is now my teacher. Wow. Like, so <laughs> everything just lined up Amazing. so perfectly yes Amazing. they started they started teaching ayurveda just a few months after i recovered wow and so i began exactly, studying so nice what exactly is ayurveda <laughs> for people who don't know it's um it's like holistic medicine and mm -hmm. it centers around the digestion like Mm -hmm. All they talk about is digestion and because everything starts from there. Ev everything is a chain reaction with, which begins with your digestion. Okay. So if you you come in for eczema, they'll start with your digestion oh, wow. and see if it goes away. <laughs> and that actually happened with me. Oh, wow. I just, so is it like a diet change? That was the, yeah, that was the mm -hmm. first thing uh, they we didn't even target the eczema, mm -hmm. um, but it just suddenly went away like five days after she told me to like, you need to eat coriander and some turmeric and then it just disappeared. And 
Wow. I'd had so many prescriptions for that eczema. <laughs> so wow. It yeah. was insane. Oh, and that, yeah. that really like uh, lit the fire of my Amazing. belief <laughs> in Ayurveda. <laughs> so Amazing. yeah. Um, but yes, Ayurveda. Um, there are like different body types and um, they will like um, figure which one you are mm -hmm. and find out what state of balance or imbalance you're in. Mm -hmm. So they will treat um, the imbalance, but they will also be careful of not uh, triggering your underlying body type. Mm. So everyone gets a different treatment mm -hmm. because there are so many factors at play. So all mm -hmm. treatment is individualized, individualized, right. yeah. Wow, yeah. that's that's so cool. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, what uh, what happened next? Like, so the eczema was gone, and then did more stuff start getting cured? Like, how how long did it take for the fatigue to go away, or was that a combination of things that helped with that? Yeah, the eczema went away from doing like little things, mm -hmm. but but the fatigue was still like super heavy. So. Mm -hmm that's when we decided that we needed to do like the most intensive treatment in Ayurveda, which is called a panchakarma. Okay. And that means it means five actions. Okay. And um, so they have like five different therapies to choose from when they do this. So every panchakarma is different in mm -hmm. duration and in treatment. It mm -hmm. depends on what's wrong right? <laughs> and what season it, you're in, it is. And because if you do certain things in the fall when things are drier mm -hmm. and colder, it might have a too strong effect. Like, so okay. if you do it in the summer, it's better. And all that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's very like in tune with nature and like mm. everything is taken into account. Awesome. So <laughs> January 20, uh, 31st, I think, uh, 2019 I began Panchakarma and mm -hmm. at that point I was I was still feeling like shit I was bed bound and I cried the night before because I thought I wouldn't be able to like walk down the stairs and walk back up again to just mm -hmm. let, let the lady in <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, so we began with the lymph massage and some sweating um, and also eating this uh, dish, it's called kitchari, and it's super easy to digest. Okay. It's just rice and lentils cooked for like two hours. Oh, wow. So it's like mushy, soupy, mm -hmm. and there's spices in it to help you digest. And uh, after this meal, I suddenly felt more energy and wow. because it, it, I could digest it and I didn't mm -hmm. get any discomfort and I, the f fatigue like went away like after one meal because Amazing. that's the thing like um, in Ayurveda chronic fatigue syndrome is categorized as a disease of indigestion mm. So if you have bad digestion over many years, like I did, you will get fatigue because it's so depleting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, just because I usually felt the worst when I ate. That's when mm -hmm. I felt the heaviest and foggiest. And so when I had this meal that I can suddenly digest, I f just felt light and clear mm -hmm. and energized. <laughs> And Amazing. so I, I I ate this meal for like 16 days straight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was really sick of it, but I felt so refreshed. Yeah. So I, <laughs> at that point, it's like whatever, days, yeah. <laughs> whatever it tastes like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I just knew it was good for me. I knew there was something there, and it didn't matter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was doing it. Amazing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. after those 16 days, I was. Uh, walking I was taking walks I was taking wow. the bus I was reconnecting with friends Amazing. <laughs> I just I had my energy fully back but I had no muscles right. so I 
did get like pain in my legs and stuff from mm-hmm. suddenly walking too much, but there was no like, um, in chronic fatigue syndrome, there's very like you do something and then there's like a payback. You have to mm. pay for the energy you spent with, with like days of pain and mm-hmm. extra fatigue. But th- even though I walked for too too long, according to my muscles, I woke up with refreshed energy Amazing. the next day. It was just, <laughs> my energy was back. Wow. Yeah. What what an amazing switch from like you couldn't get out of bed at all and doctors were yeah. not taking you seriously and it was just such a nightmare <laughs> to after 16 days of eating this certain meal, you can do stuff again. Yeah. Like that's so incredible. <laughs> just learning to take care of your digestion like gives you good energy Mm -hmm. because in the west we're only taught like what to eat but we're not taught Mm. like how to eat (laughs) so like if you eat when you aren't hungry your digestive fire isn't like ready Mm. to process it and that makes you feel very like clogged and heavy Mm -hmm. so it's important to like treat this fire well Mm -hmm. so yeah that's a lot of sense (laughs) that really Mm. makes so much sense Damn. Yes, it's so simple, but so effective. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and like just no one knows about this either. So it's like, like, yeah. what are we doing to ourselves? <laughs> and this is like ancient wisdom. Yeah, this is like at least five thousand year old mm-hmm. Indian wisdom. Amazing. Ayurveda is very connected to yoga, by the mm-hmm. way. If that makes it easier to place somewhere. Right. It, they both come from like the Vedic system. Right. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So how did uh, all the other stuff play in like the journaling and all that? Like when did you know you needed to deal with the emotional aspect of stuff once you started to feel better? I had actually realized it before I got better and I mm-hmm. tried to like meditate and stuff, but and tried to like heal trauma but Mm -hmm. I was still being traumatized right that's that's what I learned that you can't like heal until you've stopped the stabbing right (laughs) you need to stop the stabbing first exactly (laughs) yeah wow so how did you stumble upon all that so uh youtube podcasts and yeah, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have internet yeah. while I was bedbound. Right? Yeah, like whoa. <laughs> yeah. How can you how can you get out of a situation if you're not getting any uh, new information right. or new input? Exactly. So I yeah. When people got sick before the internet came, they were yeah, yeah a lot more isolated. Yeah. Yeah. You're very much at mercy of what their doctors have to say and then if they had a doctor like your first yeah. doctor that completely dismissed them like they're just completely screwed <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're stuck you're trapped totally yeah. totally yeah. so did did you eventually move out of your parents house yes uh that happened in um april 2019 I recovered like physically Mm -hmm. in February 2019 and then and at first I was like um, kind of getting back into my old life at first Mm -hmm. like okay maybe I can go back to engineering and uh, pleasing my parents Mm -hmm. like (laughs) that was my life before (laughs) yeah but um the symptoms seemed to be returning but only at certain times of day and Mm -hmm. that's when it clicked yeah it finally like clicked i only get headaches when i'm around my mom Mm. and or my dad Mm -hmm. that's i was like holy moly (laughs) (laughs) it it was because of the I didn't yet know what narcissistic abuse was Mm -hmm. or gaslighting or anything like Mm -hmm. that. But I just knew that the accumulated weight Mm -hmm. 
yes. of all of these little situations every day from birth until right. now had made me ill. Right. And that it would happen again yes. if I didn't like do something like drastically about this. I right. I just had to protect my health and my life. I I just suddenly knew that if I stayed, I would definitely die. Mm -hmm. There there was no question about it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, I actually uh, had a breakdown one morning. Like I usually try to avoid my mom in the mornings, mm -hmm. uh, but she found me anyways. And uh, in that like 30 seconds conversations, conversations she like insulted me like 27 times oh. and uh, I went to a yoga class after that and I just mm. broke down in class and That's I amazing. just I just <laughs> I biked home while crying and I just I couldn't do it anymore yeah. and that day I left I awesome. put my duvet in a blue IKEA bag I put it on my bike <laughs> wow. I packed some things and I just biked away and it's it, it snowed when I was biking and oh, no. I remember thinking like this is like in a movie yeah <laughs> it really <laughs> was it really does sound like a movie yeah. wow where did you go uh, at first I went to my sibling mm -hmm. and then I found found an apartment amazing so yeah. Amazing. That's, I'm so happy you were able to get out of that situation and, you know, like just that willpower, like if I stay here, I will probably die. So, you know, yeah. like screw this. I, my mental health is more important than keeping my parents happy. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't yet fully sure, like fully, fully sure mm -hmm. that this was the right thing to do. And I didn't yet know what no contact was. I just mm -hmm. knew I had to do something. So you listen to your gut. I, yeah, your I told them I I need, I need a break. Mm -hmm. But after two weeks, I saw them again. Like I went to their house mm -hmm. for dinner, and uh, and my mom was just <laughs> furious with me for oh. taking that break, and just that short interaction with her again. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sleep that night. I was just so anxious and yeah. felt felt the tingling in my arms and legs again. And I just, okay, she oh. is so detrimental to my health. I can't. Mm -hmm. I just, it would be like irresponsible of me to mm -hmm. stay in contact. Of course. <laughs> yeah, it would be so self-sacrificing. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Such a waste. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And your your life, like we're not our parents keepers. Like we, we don't yeah. get born to these people to just cater to them for our entire lives. Cause then what's the point of life? Yeah. Right? Like it's, it's all about finding your own path. And, you know, even though you weren't a hundred percent sure you took that leap of faith, you followed your gut, you got out of a toxic situation. And then that was reinforced to you two yeah. weeks later when you started having the physical symptoms again. So it's just, you know, it's, yeah. it sucks that that happened, but it's just so amazing as well that, you know, you had that determination and your symptoms literally showed up as soon as you were in contact yes. with your mom again. <laughs> and that is so telling to the mind-body connection. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really grateful for the physical symptoms because, yes. you know, you're so used to having pain in your emotions and mm -hmm. in your mind that that's like... You, <laughs> normal and it's just the way it is but these physical mm -hmm. symptoms are like so they're like screaming at you and you have yes. to take action you have to listen to them whereas yeah. if it's just your emotions you're like I can be in pain it's fine <laughs> it's so true yeah. it's so true and you learn that from such a young age too and like your parents are narcissistic they completely yeah. invalidate your emotions from birth from in the womb <laughs> like it's you're not allowed yeah. to have any emotions yeah. yeah I thought that was just I thought every child uh, had a childhood childhood like that and everyone was in was dealing with the same communication mm -hmm. <laughs> you could say 
with their parents, but it was only me that felt this pain because I was sensitive, couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. I was weak. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But turns out I'm completely normal. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> the, it was extremely dysfunctional and yes. abusive. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you came to that realization. <laughs> Yeah. It's, Thank you. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot to realize, yeah. but you know, like you're, you're literally living proof that you can heal from, you know, narcissistic abuse, first of all, second of all, a debilitating illness, you know? Yeah. And that like, it's absolutely so possible to heal. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and I learned that the body can heal pretty quickly yes. if the right factors yes. are there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What would you say are the most important factors for the body to heal? Uh, definitely working on digestion. Mm -hmm. But after that, I would say uh, reducing stress, yes. healing trauma, yeah. removing... I've always heard like, oh, you should, stress is bad for health, stop stressing, mm -hmm. la, 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 but, but no one is saying um, what you actually have to do to yeah. reduce stress, which is make really hard choices. Yes. They're, they're not saying like, they're always saying, yeah, just relax more. But in That's reality, it's more like, <laughs> oh, okay. it's more like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> How do you stop yes. stressing out when all you know is stress? <laughs> In reality, it's like you have to make heartbreaking choices, maybe yes. cut contact with your own parents, yes. and you might have to completely change careers l late in life mm -hmm. to and just tear down everything that is not like built on an authentic foundation for you. Yes. So it's that's really hard, but it's. It is. It is harder to just keep living a shitty life. <laughs> yes, yeah. I could not agree more. It's I completely, completely agree with you. It sounds that sounds exactly like me as well. <laughs> Where you know you you have to make those choices. You have yeah. to do, you have to do something about it. You can't just sit there and like will away the abuse and just hope that you know. Especially yeah. if someone's a narcissist, you can't. You can't change them. There's no, nothing is going to get through to them, especially, you know, in, in any case. And when it's, you're their daughter, <laughs> you know, you would think, yeah. you would hope, right? Because most like normal parents who are not narcissistic, <laughs> they give a crap about their children. <laughs> but yeah, when it's narcissistic parents, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around the fact that, you know, your parents like only really care about themselves and, you have to make those hard decisions to disengage yeah. from them and live life on your own terms and not what they think is right for you. Yeah. And I just chased what I thought would make them happy my entire life. And I, I felt like I had wasted almost 27 years of my mm -hmm. life not doing anything for me not doing anything I wanted to do I felt like I still feel like I don't have a lot of like real memories that were from mm -hmm. authentic situations mm -hmm. before now and yeah. Uh, yeah I can't get those years back but at least I'm starting now exactly. <laughs> making real memories yeah exactly being myself yeah you know like it's <laughs> It's unfortunate that we, we have those decades that, you know, we couldn't really do anything for ourselves and we were stuck being abused and everything. But, you know, it's never, ever too late to pick up the pieces, make those hard decisions and have that, you know, I guess determination would be the word to figure out what you want out of life and how to live life on your own terms, not your parents' terms, not the terms of what society says you should do, like whatever, yeah. right? Like it's, it's you and, you know, we're, we only have one life and make the most out of it, especially after you've been in that pain and that debilitating mm -hmm. chronic fatigue that you were having. Like, yeah, 
you're not gonna, how do I word this? It's not like you're gonna get cured of that only to continue the patterns and behaviors and yeah. crap that led you to that complete state of imbalance. Yeah, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I realized how if I did that, I would just create the same situation all over again. Exactly. And I have been like trying to build my identity this past year. And mm -hmm. I've actually found out that there was a lot of me in all those years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was trapped. It was just very couldn't come out. Hid, hidden and I couldn't like explore it and build on it but the mm -hmm. seeds were definitely there and they they were not lost they were just mm -hmm. waiting so like mm -hmm. the interests I had when I was just a child that I wanted to like explore but couldn't I've just mm -hmm. taken them up now and I'm still as passionate about Amazing. them as I was so <laughs> yeah like I always wanted to dance mm -hmm. And so this past year I've taken dance classes Amazing. like for the first time <laughs> Yay, and it was awesome. just as fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah. That's awesome. That is so like, that's so awesome. I love it. Cause it's like your, your inner child wanted this yes. when you were a kid. It's so was, healing. Yeah. It's so healing. Yeah. Also little things like, um, uh, especially with clothing, I found a lot of healing because I couldn't dress like I wanted to. Right. I was completely controlled, of course, in that yeah. aspect. And so I've really just uh, gone like full on crazy, colorful. I love it. I've seen I just, your post. And yeah. I love it. It's like, wow, like good for her. Like she's so, you're so, so healing. unique. It's such a unique style. I love it. You Thank pull you. it off amazingly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it is just, it's so you, like your personality, your style, like it just, it's so, it meshes so well. And I love it. Like, I love that you have the courage to like be yourself. And that's so amazing. And I bet that was super healing for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's just, I can't shove it back down anymore. And it just feels so good to uh, reflect on the outside what mm -hmm. I feel like on the inside, like my mm -hmm. personality, my joy, like mm -hmm. my humor. I just feel like I'm like ah, <laughs> sending it. it out in the world. Yeah. No, you have such an amazing yeah. energy. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and so now you're, uh, you're taking classes to be an Ayurvedic practitioner? Yes, now, now there's actually a break uh, and we start up again next April. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it's getting more serious and I will get to travel to India and take some wow. courses there and I'm like really excited. Amazing, <laughs> I'm so, so excited for you. <laughs> Thank you. In like uh, three or four years time, I might be able to begin coaching and... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just being an Ayurvedic practitioner and Amazing. helping people in similar situations. So, amazing. Yeah, that's Did my dream. Ever, that's amazing. I love it. Did you ever think you were going to do this? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I have to become an engineer, even though I always wanted to like write, film, uh, edit. I, those are my favorite mm -hmm. things to do. Dancing, writing, filming, and editing. Amazing. And just being <laughs> being funny, making stupid jokes. And mm -hmm. I, I like should have studied something in media when I started yeah. university. Yeah. yeah. That would but have made me so much happier. <laughs> totally, totally. But it's now I'm here. And yeah. Yeah. I think it was meant to be that I... Yeah was to become an Ayurvedic practitioner Amazing. and have this experience because you, of course you want a doctor or a healer that has lived through what mm -hmm. you're going through. Like yeah. that's the like best help you can get. And Absolutely. now in the future, I'll be able to provide that. So. Absolutely. 
yes. you know, you're, I think you're already <laughs> helping people, honestly, like just sharing your story, like people who have chronic fatigue syndrome, narcissistic parents, and all that, like just mm. hearing your words and what you have to say and just seeing your transformation from yeah, thank you. bedridden, right? Like bedridden yeah. on the verge of death, like actually planning your funeral to mm. healed and loving life and creating your own footsteps and going into a new career of the thing that healed you. Yes. That's incredible. It, it all feels so like it was meant to be. Yeah. So that's what I kind of also want to tell people who are in like a very dark place right now. Mm -hmm. It might be a, the very shitty part of a very awesome transformation. Yes. You just, you can't see the, the coming steps yet, but it's, mm -hmm. it's happening for a reason. Exactly. And you're supposed to learn something from this and then transform into the next mm. step. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Do you have any final words of wisdom or anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? Hmm. Thank you for having me. You're and so I guess welcome. I would say... <laughs> uh, <laughs> be yourself <laughs> yeah. always yes mm -hmm. the price is too high to be mm -hmm. anything else Absolutely. even though it is painful and it might you might have to make some hard choices in the beginning but then it will all be worth it so yes, yes. all worth it in the and, end. and help is always coming when you when you suddenly align with yourself mm -hmm. help comes yes. when you're ready yeah. Yes. I love it. Love it. <laughs> and how can people find you if they want to learn more about you and your story? Uh, I have a um, YouTube channel. It's mm -hmm. just uh, Vera Wilhelmsen. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, it's the same. If you want to send me a message, that's where I'll reply the quickest. Awesome. And my website is also verawilhelmsen.com. If you don't know how that is spelled, you'll probably i'll have link the link it yeah yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. Put all the links uh for your youtube channel the contact info the website and everything in the description of this episode so people can find you contact you learn more about you and your amazing incredible story yeah thank you so much for having me and thank you for being can here. i just say mm -hmm. adriana is like the the queen of uh <laughs> He healing emotional Aww. trauma <laughs> queen of journaling and just working straight through it and i just yeah i just love your work so thank you so you much you have helped me so much yeah. oh amazing oh i think i'm gonna blush <laughs> thank you so much i really appreciate it <laughs> that's awesome and yeah. you know you you also are the queen of healing like just your story is so like <laughs> wow <laughs> Wow. Thank you. Welcome. We I need will... many queens and kings yes. of healing. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we're all kings and queens of healing, honestly. <laughs> like anyone who yes. has even just decided to do it, like even yes. just taking the first step, you're already the king or queen. <laughs> yes. Like you're choosing you. <laughs> if you've journaled for 20 minutes for the first time in your life, I like applaud you and yes. so proud of you. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much again for being here. It was such a pleasure talking with you. And um, I can't wait to see how many people you inspire with your story. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Bye. Goodbye.